118, Psalm 118, verse 22, Psalm 118, verse 22. If you don't have a Bible right in front of you underneath the um, seat, there's a black Bible you can borrow um, for the service, and we'd certainly um, enjoy you to be able to see the Bible with us. Well, Psalm 118, let's all stand as we read the Word of God, Psalm 118 and verse 22, Psalm 118, verse 22. If you found that, would you give me a good strong amen? amen? Scripture says in verse 22, The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. You can just stop right there, circle that verse, put Jesus Christ right next to that. That's who it's talking about right there. And he says, This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to take verse 24. We hear that verse over and over and over again. I think oftentimes we look at this verse in a wrong way. I don't think that it's, I don't think it's wrong to apply it the way that most of us look at it. But I don't believe that's what this verse was originally intended to be for you and I. I want to take this verse right here, verse 24. I want to talk about this phrase, I will rejoice. I will rejoice. Father, take these next few minutes. And please allow me to be a help to thy people, please. Oh, God, we need your help. I pray that you calm every child. I pray everyone to be quiet. And for the next few minutes, there's some people here that desperately need this truth. I want to be a help to them, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We often quote, Psalm 118.24 as a command that we are to rejoice every day of our life. Now follow me very carefully. I'm not against that. I don't think that's wrong. I think we ought to rejoice every day. We have that song. We, we, we sing the song. Um, I, you know, we, we look at this verse and we, it says this is the day. And, and teenagers will often sing this is the day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. That the Lord hath made. You, if you've been around church, you've heard that verse, that song. It's a wonderful song. And oftentimes we get that song. We get that song from this verse right here. And it's a happy song. It's a joyful song because we say, oh, we ought to rejoice every day of our life. Now, I believe that's what we ought to do. I don't think that you're going to help the lost crowd to want to get saved if you're a grump your entire life. Somebody help me out with that right there. Nobody wants to be around a grump. They like to be around people that are happy, that are rejoicing, that are always doing right inside of their life. That's what we want to do inside of life. But can I tell you, that's not what this verse is talking about. God says this is the day. We ought to rejoice and we ought to be glad. Yeah, I tell people, oh, my, my mama used to say, you ever have a mama tell you when you're frowning, your mama say, son, if you don't put a smile on that face, I'll turn that smile, that frown around. Now, she wasn't going to turn it around the way that I wanted her to turn it around, but she was going to turn it around. Now, what was she saying? You need to be happy in life. You've got to get a smile on that face. And boy, I think that, and by the way, I think that you can choose to be happy if you really want to. It's what you focus on inside of life. But hold on. This verse, when you look at this verse, let me tell you a few things that this verse is not saying, and let me point you out why this verse says that. First of all, this verse is not saying that I will rejoice today. That's not what it's saying. He says, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Nowhere does he say we'll rejoice today. He says we will rejoice and be glad in it. So that day is going to come, but get this now. But he's not saying I'm going to rejoice today. This verse also does not say I will be glad today. Now, now understand this. You look at this verse and God says I will rejoice. Now, he, he said, this is the day that the Lord hath made. What day? When you look at the passage of Scripture, he's talking about the day that Jesus Christ will be crucified. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know that's a real happy day as you're going through the crucifixion. Somebody help me out. When you got nails being driven through your hand, that's not a happy day, and that's not a glad day. Now, I don't think our Savior was a grump. I don't think he was down in the dumps. But I'll tell you this. I'm telling you right now, that was not a glad day. So this verse is not saying, I'll rejoice today, though I may rejoice today. This verse is not saying, I'll be glad today, though I think we ought to be glad today. This verse does not say, today is a good day. 
He just said, this is the day. This is the day. Now, this just means there's a lot of stuff going on today. Huh? If I was to ask you in the last 30 days, how many of you have had one bad day? Something bad, something bad happened in the last 30 days. Would you raise your hand? Yeah, we all have. I mean, i got to come in the office and look at these two guys every day. That's a bad day. Now, do you understand? God says this is the day. There's a lot of stuff that comes home. Teenagers come home and they hear a mom and dad um, fighting or maybe a parent gets arrested or, or a husband comes home and the wife is, is, is frazzled because she's dealt with the children or the, or the, hu- or the, or the um, wife has to deal with the husband coming home and griping and demanding and putting everything. And just, you know, there's a lot that goes on in every day. So not every day, get this now, is going to be a good day, but this is the day the Lord hath made. So follow me carefully. So he's not saying I'll rejoice today. He's not saying I'll be glad today. He's not saying that today will be a good day. But he, but get this, he's not even saying this. I will understand what's going on today. And you go to bed at nighttime, you look at why God, what's going on? God, I I don't understand. I'm trying to do right. Why is this going on right now? God, I'm trying to do everything right. I'm not the best. I I know I'm not perfect, but God, why is this? Why do I have to deal with this right now? Why do I have to deal with death right now? Why do I have to deal with bad finances right now? Why do I have to deal with pain right now? Why do I have to deal with sorrow right now? There's a lot of things in life. People come to me often and say, Preacher, can you help me? And I'll be honest with you, I wish I could help everybody, but I'm not God. The only thing I can do is take you to the God that I'm going to go to to pray for you. That's all I can do. There's times that people sit in my office, and I'll be honest with you, they sit there, and I sit there with them. And I say, I don't understand it. But I know one thing. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Now, because the Lord made it, I'm okay with an omnipotent God making my day and putting inside of my day what he put inside of it. Because I know he knows what is best. Now, I want you to notice a little phrase in this verse. He says, this is the day that which the Lord hath made. I want you to notice in verse, in verse, um, in verse 24, he says, we will rejoice. Let me ask you English majors a question. This, that phrase, we will, is that present tense or is that future tense? Future tense. God says, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice. He goes, the day's going to come. You look back and you will rejoice. That's what God said. God says, you may not rejoice now, but you hang on. You hang on. Don't you quit right now. Don't you give up the battle right now. One day you're going to see the whole thing. You'll look back and you'll say, I get it now. I understand it now. I see what God's doing in my life right now. I don't understand the struggles right now, but I know there's coming a day. I will understand those struggles. I don't understand the burdens right now, but I know I know my God. He said one day we will rejoice in it. One day I will see ahead and I'll understand why the tears were there, why the heartache was there why the sorrow was there why the struggle was there I'll understand it someday but until that day I think I'll trust in almighty God to know that he knows what he's doing inside of my life Amen. I like to put it this way Psalm 118 24 is the Romans 8 28 of the Old Testament In the Old Testament, God says, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. In Romans 8, 28, in the New Testament, he says, and we know that all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I read in the Old Testament and I realize God made this day. I realize in the Old Testament I see that one day I will rejoice. I come over to the New Testament and he says all things work together. What's that? That's, this is the day which the Lord hath made. So, so, so that part 
is the first part of Psalm 118, 24, where this is the day. That's those all things working together for good. But then he says, all things work together for good to them that love God. That for good, get this now, is the end of Psalm 118, 24. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't always understand the ingredients of life, but I understand one thing. I understand that there's a God in heaven who does know what's going on. And I just I just say, okay, I see what God is doing. I understand I may not rejoice today. I may not, I may not like what today has, but I know this. I know the God who holds my tomorrow and the ingredients of today is going to help me to rejoice tomorrow if I don't quit serving God in the hard times inside of life. Let me tell you what this verse is saying. It's saying one day I will rejoice and be glad. So when the tears are running down my face, I say one day I'll rejoice over those tears. I don't understand the tears right now, but one day I will understand those tears and I'll rejoice over the tears. I, don't, I may not like what's caused the tears to come down, but one day I'll look back and I'll say, thank God God sent those tears because those tears allow me to rejoice in what God put inside of my life to make me what I am. Oh, I, I tell you right now, I'd much rather trust an omnipotent God who knows my tomorrow than to trust myself that I don't even know what the next hour holds. I'll just trust God and I'll say, okay, I don't understand this stuff in the day that I'm living right now, but I know all things work together for good and if I stick with it, hey, I I will rejoice and be glad in it. You see, this verse is saying God gives me today something that will make me rejoice tomorrow and be glad tomorrow. Mama used to say, in our house we grew up, she, she believed in the three um, food categories of foods. Meat, Starch and vegetables. Anybody grow up in a house like that? Yeah. I hated vegetables. Anybody with me right there? Yeah, there you are. I hated vegetables as a kid. My mama would put, she'd put lima beans on my, on my plate. I can't stand, to this day, I don't like lima beans. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to where I rejoice on that day, but I'm just telling you, I don't like lima beans. My mama, she'd put those lima beans on, and, and we had a rule in our house. If you wrinkled your nose, you got more. Well, how do you not wrinkle your nose and eat lima beans? Somebody help me out. Those are the nastiest. I think that was part of the curse in the Garden of Eden. And you get those lima beans and you put them out. And my mom said, now, son, you eat those lima beans. One day you're going to grow up and be strong. Those lima beans are going to make you strong. I'm thinking, how can that make me strong? If it's going to do anything, you're going to put me in a casket. Uh, my mom would put broccoli on my, on my plate. Now, she didn't fry it. She, um, help me out, ladies, it steam it, boil it, or do you do both? Whatever it is, she just do that, and it was nasty. I look at my mom, and I say, Mom, why in the world are we having miniature trees on our plate? I am not a cow. Somebody help me out. Cows eat green stuff. Humans eat meat. Somebody say amen to that right there. And she had, she had said, now, son, you eat those, you eat that broccoli, it's going to be good. One day, it's going to be good for you. I said, my mom, she goes, son, just eat it. Just eat it. And we were not even allowed to pinch our nose. You had to sit there and, and hold your nose from wrinkling. Because if you, if you wrinkled your nose, you got more. Every once in a while, she put Brussels sprouts. You know what a Brussels sprout is? It's a head of cabbage that forgot to grow up. <laughs> She'd put those Brussels sprouts, and for some reason, I don't know what it is about Brussels sprouts, they always have a sour taste. Am I right, am I right on that? 
I don't know what it is about Brussels. I don't know. I've yet to eat a good Brussels sprout. People say, well, put it, you know, if you put a lot of butter, you put a lot of, let me help you out. It ruins what you put over it because of what it tastes like. But she's saying, now, son, it's going to be good for you. Going to be good for you. It's going to make you grow up. Going to make you strong. Going to make you healthy. But I'd, I'd have to sit there. I'd eat it. Now, I tried the wrinkle part on dessert, the wrinkling the nose on the dessert. She didn't keep, she wasn't, she wasn't God in that area. She didn't give me more with the dessert. But I'm telling you, but now, what was my mama saying? She'd say, now, son, I'm putting, I'm putting this on there. She goes, now, now, you eat it. You may not like it, but it's going to be good for you someday. Can I tell you, sometimes God plops on your plate a bunch of Brussels sprouts and you look at God and you say God what in the world are you doing inside of my life and God says eat them eat them and don't you wrinkle your nose I'll give you more you say that God I don't understand it he says one day you will rejoice You see, God's just simply saying, God says, He's, I'm giving you something today that will allow you to rejoice tomorrow. Okay, okay. Let's just bring it down to where some of you ladies live. When you had that baby, in the delivering time of that baby, you didn't see anything good about having a baby. Somebody help me out. I'm just telling what ladies tell me. I'm not a lady. I've never been there. But isn't it funny you rejoice in that child now? You love that child now. That child that caused so much pain in its birth and as the pain was in your body and the tears rolled down your face as you're delivering that child and your body would go through the jaws of death to bring life inside of this old world. Some of you ladies, you saw, you, you, you're sitting there and if your husband would have said, do you want another child? You'd have decked him and sent him to wherever he's going. But after that child came, after the pain was over, after it was gone, you look back and you see that sweet little baby. Amen. And you say, oh, what a beautiful, precious life. And you begin to love that baby. Now, what, what, what was going on? This is the day. Which the Lord hath made, we what? will rejoice. And God says that day is going to come. He says, I'm just putting the ingredients inside of it, which means this. Today's ingredient is tomorrow's rejoicing. What I rejoice in today is what I went through yesterday. What I rejoice in today, yesterday I did not like. But because I have it today, I look back and I say, thank God for yesterday. Thank God for the sorrow. Thank God for the tears. Thank God for the broccoli. Thank God for the, for the, um, for the cauliflower. Thank God for the Brussels sprouts. Don't understand it now. I thank God as I, as I have a pretty healthy body here up to this stage of my life. God's been good to me. You say, why? I think because mama said, it's going to be good for you. Going to be good for you. I'm telling you right now, God looks at some of you right now. You're going through the hardest times of your life and you say, I don't understand it. Can I tell you? God's just saying, it's going to be good for you. Just trust the God who knows what he's doing in your life. One day you'll look back and you'll say, I can't believe I cried over that. How can something so painful become so joyful because only God can make that now you listen to me you don't have to understand children quiet now you don't have to understand what you're facing today I'm to trust God and say, God, I don't understand, but I trust you. Amen. I know you know what you're doing inside of life. Amen. Now, God, I trust you. Amen. I trust you. Amen. I don't like what you've put on my plate for this day, but you said this is the day which the Lord hath made. So I know you made this day, and I know what's going on this day. You put inside. I'm not talking about the ingredients that we put in there. I'm talking about the ingredients God puts in there. I'm saying this, until that day comes, trust God that he knows what he's doing. Amen. Trust him. Amen. Hey, 
those who sit in the lonely times of life. Widows, widowers, you sit in a house empty and it's the voices you once used to love are no longer here, but they're walking the streets of golden heaven and you say, I don't understand this. I don't understand why God allowed this to come in my life. Can I tell you right now? Can I tell you, one day you'll rejoice. You'll look back when you get to heaven's shores and you'll look back and you'll say, boy, now I see it. I understand. I don't understand it now, but this is the day. Amen. This is the day. The ingredients, God's, God's preparing me for a day to rejoice. Amen. Amen. Until then, don't become bitter Amen. over today's ingredients. Believe it or not, you know what I like? You know what vegetable I like the most other than green beans? Broccoli. I love broccoli. Yeah, amen. When my wife says, honey, what do you want to eat? I'll say, she, she can tell you. I either want green beans or I want broccoli. Because my, my wife knows how to put that broccoli in a, in a skillet, put some butter or bacon grease, a little bit of anything. You know, bacon grease makes a lot of things really taste good. And she'll fry, she'll get a little simmer on that, on those, on those, um, on that broccoli right there. And and I'll I'll look and, and I'll I'll tell I'll say, she goes, but we've had broccoli every day. But yeah, but I like it now. Amen. I like it now. You say, why? Oh, back here I didn't understand it, but I do understand it right now, and I and I I've acquired the taste for it right now. And can I tell you, one day you'll find if you'll trust an Almighty God, and you'll say, God, I know I know you know what you're doing inside of my life. One day you'll look back and say, Boy, I'm glad I didn't run. I'm glad I didn't hide. I'm glad I didn't get bitter over what's going on in my life. I'm just gonna trust God. I'm not gonna take it out on anybody else. I'll trust God and know what he's doing inside of my life we often look and we say oh I don't know if I can never enjoy this why don't you look up to heaven and let me ask you a question has God ever failed you but he's always been right he has always been right and in the hardest times of your life this is what I like God says I'll tell you what I'll be there with you Huh? Yeah. Hey, mamas, have you mamas? You have a little, you have a little child uh, uh, in the in the in maybe two and three year old. I think it's t about three years of age, and you're trying to get them to like something, and so you take a bite with them, yeah. and you, mmm, good. <laughs> or you have a little baby in that in the in there, and you, and you get that baby jar out. That's what Brother Trimble does. But you get that baby jar out. And you got that smashed peas or whatever they got. <laughs> and, and, and that baby is like, ugh. And that baby's right. And you give that little, and you get, and, and you, mommy, you get that, mmm, mm, liar. Mmm, mmm, that's good. As that child just goes ahead and takes a bite. Thinks, well, I guess mom and dad think it's good. I think I'll try it too. I think they're a little crazy, but that's okay. God, I think a lot of times, should I tell you what? I'll take a bite with you. He says, cast your care upon the Lord, for he careth for you. God says, you put it on me. He says, I'll take a bite with you. He says, now, I'm not going to take it away from you. I'll take it with you. Because this is the day Amen. which the Lord hath made. Amen. We will. I don't know when that will is going to happen, but I do know it is going to happen. Amen. So until then, I trust God. Amen. And I look up to God and say, God, I know you know what you're doing. Because you're in control, I will not gripe. I'm not going to say I'm going to enjoy it, but I'm not going to gripe. I'm not going to say I want to jump up and whoopee, whoopee. Now, you don't do that. You don't do that sometimes. It's not the right time to do it. But sometimes when you're going through the rough time of life, you just look up to God and say, God, I, I know you know what you're doing. I want to trust you. And you know what happens? 
God puts ingredients today for tomorrow's rejoicing, but some of the things you rejoice with today while you're having the this day is because of yesterday's this day. So I find something to rejoice in today that God put in my bowl yesterday. And I said, so I can rejoice because an ingredient of yesterday helped me to rejoice today, though in this same bowl there's another this day that I have to deal with this. But I'm going to focus on the rejoicing side and trust God that one day I'll rejoice over here. You say, preacher, how do you get to that point? I struggle getting to that point. Well, I'll tell you where it all starts. It all starts with accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I've trusted God that he can save my soul from hell. That's why God says, he says, this day, what day? The day that Jesus died on the cross. The disciples are weep, the disciples are weeping in despair. Has hit. He says, Don't worry. He says, the chief cornerstone. He's not going to stay in the grave. He's going to come up out of the grave. And you'll rejoice when he comes up out of that grave. So he says, Why don't you just trust me? I told you I want to rise again. That day's going to come. This body's going to come up out of that grave. And I, as a young boy, one day I looked up to God and I didn't understand that I didn't want to go to hell. I wanted to go to heaven. And I realized that God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to pay for my sins. He paid for every sin from the day I was born until the day I died. And that God loved me enough that he was willing to go through this day for you and I. He took my sins upon himself. He, he bear my sins on the cross of Calvary. That he died, was buried, and rose again. And then I realized because he rose again, he offers that payment to you and I. He says, you want to go to heaven one day? He says, then why don't you do this? Why don't you trust Christ? Accept the gift. Let me show you how easy it is to accept that gift. Come here, Brother Tremble. Brother Trimble's a lost man. We know that. Any man that wears socks like that is a lost man. (laughs) Now, let me tell you how easy it is. God says, I'll offer you salvation as a gift. You can receive it. That's how easy it is. He didn't have to go in that baptistry to get this. He didn't have to be good to get it. He just had to say, I I want to trust Christ. And I'll receive that gift that Christ has paid it all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Huh? Oh, I'm glad that Christ paid it all. And that day when I accepted Christ, that gift, I just took it like that. How'd you take it, preacher? I'll tell you how I took it. Thank you. I knelt down beside my couch in Conway, South Carolina. And I said to God, I said, Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I don't want to go to hell. So right now I accept your payment on the cross as the payment of my sins. Come into my heart and save me. And that night when I did that, Christ became my Savior. And because he saved me back then, let me tell you what I've done If he can save me then, then he can get me through this day right now. There's been a lot of days in 55 years of my life that I've had to go through. I know I don't look a day over 55. You say amen right there, liars. 55 years of my life. Been a lot of heartaches, a lot of struggles, but I've trusted that God who put it on my plate, who said, one day you'll rejoice in this day. Trust him. Father, there's many here this morning carrying heavy burdens. I am so glad, God, that you said this is the day which the Lord hath made. I understand you make it. I wish I could rejoice in every day, and I should rejoice because I trust you. But you said even if I don't, one day, if I don't quit, if I keep going, you said we will rejoice. That day is going to come. We're going to rejoice. So until then, i got to keep going until that day comes. 
help many who are carrying heavy burdens this morning to understand that's part of the ingredients of the rejoicing tomorrow. May they not give up. May they not quit. May they keep going. There's some today that need to get saved, help them to get saved. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Who in here this morning is a preacher?